This is part two for creating a carbon fiber version of a 3D printed sword prop. I've already created the molds from the 3D printed parts. Those have been cleaned and prepped with release agent. So now I'm laying the carbon fiber fabric into the molds and coating that with resin. For the blade on this first version, I'm trying switching out the pattern down the center of the blade. So that's laid down in two parts. The cross piece and the handle need to be done in separate parts because they are quite detailed, so you can't just lay one single piece of fabric into the mold. So I've cut those to size and then carefully placed them. I am using the weblock fabric here. It does help to keep it from fraying quite a bit so that you can cut out these small parts and not have them fall apart while you're trying to get them in place. I've added relief cuts for the cross piece so that it can lay flat into the mold and then we'll just trim away that excess later on. The very first layer is of course the important layer, cosmetically speaking. So I spent the most time getting that position properly and then the layers after that can be more focused on ensuring that it's structurally sound. They don't have to be placed so that they look good so much as that they will ensure the part isn't going to break. This is a two by two twill weave, so it does form pretty well, but the smallest detail areas do have to be trimmed to get everything into place. And then I'm just going to wet everything out with the resin. So I place that into a vacuum bag to cure along with, of course, a release layer and the breather cloths so that any excess resin has a place to go. I'm gonna just peel all that off and go ahead and release the parts from the mold. When the parts first come out, they do still have a layer of PVA, so that will need to be cleaned off later on. And then of course there is an edge that will need to be trimmed. The cross piece in particular took a bit of work to get it to release simply because the part that the mold was created from had completely 90 degree angles instead of a draft angle, but that was the trade-off from using an existing part versus designing this specifically for creating a carbon fiber version. Just had to release all the edges and then grab onto some of that extra material so that it could be pulled out. And again, because the angles are all 90 degrees and just trying to get carbon fiber into that angle, it just leaves some areas that aren't gonna be perfectly resin filled and the cloth won't reach. So that will just be repaired later on, no big deal. The blade's the easiest part to release because it is a lot less complex than the other two pieces. So we just peel away the breather cloth and the peel ply. and loosen all the edges so it can pop right out. After seeing the finished pattern transition on the blade where it switches in the center, I decided that was too complicated for such a small part that already was split into three separate planes on each side. So I decided to simplify that and just remake these parts using one piece of carbon fiber so the pattern is continuous through all of the parts. I have removed all of the PVA and trimmed the edges so that the parts do meet cleanly down the center and so that they can fit together once they're attached to each other. There are of course some inconsistencies in the finish and parts that will need to be repaired later on, but that will be done at the very end once everything has been joined together. To attach the halves for each of the part, I've created a centerpiece from a sandwich of carbon fiber with a thin sheet of foam in the center so that it doesn't droop down into the parts. We want it to stay flat while the parts are curing. So that gets wetted out with resin and each of the parts placed so that they align across that center sheet. I 
first tried clamping the parts, but there was too much shifting there. So I ended up placing them back into the molds so that one half would be held stable and then the other half could be weighted down from above so that there would be good bonding between the two halves. So when they come out, of course, now they need to be cleaned up all over again with that extra edge that's quite rough. So I used the Dremel to remove all of that excess material and get those seams as clean as possible. And this is why there's no point in repairing any imperfections before joining the parts because at this point, you know, I'm adding additional scratches and whatnot, but this will all be taken care of after we have the structural elements addressed. Because I used the dowel rod on the original 3D printed part to also cast this extension at the bottom of the blade, that does make it a lot easier to join all of these parts together once they're trimmed to fit properly. So we can do a rough test here and they already stay together okay. So now it's time to join them permanently using a fast setting epoxy. I apply this generously to all the parts on the inside where it's not going to show, but it will ensure that they're adhered together, all three parts to each other. Any of that squeeze out, I just cleaned up before it cured to minimize any sort of sanding later on. So I've let that cure for a few hours. It's all stuck together quite nicely now. It's very sturdy. There's not any flex to this. So it's comparable to the original part in that sense. For now, let's go ahead and just compare the weights just out of curiosity. So the 3D printed part here, this weighs about 266 grams. The carbon fiber version, weighs in at 106 grams, about 60% decrease in weight. And I wasn't really trying for a super lightweight part on this. There is excess resin and I will be adding even more resin just for aesthetic purposes later on. Plus we did change the edge a little bit. Everything's somewhat thinner so that the edge could be sharp and the handle portion can be more of an oval versus round. It's nice and sturdy. In future, I'm gonna go ahead and get this nice and glossy like the gauntlets.